All right, guys, today we have a 2017 Sea Doo GTR 230, and this one was brought in because it's having a misfire issue on cylinder three or the backmost cylinder. Uh, looks like the injector is possibly not firing based on the code that he said he found on the screen. So we, of course, are going to verify that. Um, there's not too much. Uh, in terms of the story on this one, it's not really exactly sure what could be causing the issue. I have it connected to my EcoFlow and a battery charger right now because uh, I went to go crank it a few minutes ago and it was it was pretty weak. So I'm going to charge out. The battery's not that old. I already checked. So it's most likely just because when it stopped working, you let it sit for a little bit. Um, but the battery is actually fairly new. Um, in terms of electrical, it does look like this was... Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like there's two drywall screws that are being used to hold the fuse box in. Uh, but the fuse box itself looks perfectly fine. The cover is off, mainly because I saw it was loose and I just wanted to roll something out. But um, it is it's perfectly fine. There's no issues there. Um, but it does seem the the, the ski does start up, uh, but it's pretty obvious something is not right. It feels like it's only running on two two cylinders so it's not a occasional misfire it is definitely a solid continuous misfire um, but you know that's besides the point let's go ahead and get it connected to the software first actually I think what I'll do is I'll start it up just so you can kind of hear what's going on um, and then we'll get it connected to the software and go from there all right initial condition it is uh, definitely kind of corroded and obvious that this thing has seen salt uh, and probably has not seen anti-corrosion spray or anything like that, but um, I did check the oil uh, just a moment ago. Not that that's going to describe the problem that we're seeing, and that was fine. Cool, it's also fine, so we're good to go there, but let's go ahead and start this up. Yeah, and you can see it. So we got a fault code, but it was also pretty obvious that this thing was not firing correctly so uh, you saw the shakes and I'm not sure how well it comes up on the GoPro microphone but it definitely sounds like this thing is only running on two cylinders so I'm gonna go ahead and get connected to buds and then we'll check it out by the way guys a lot of people ask me why I always have a NOCO connected uh, whenever I'm working on a ski even if the batteries are brand new and the reason is because um, generally whenever I'm working on skis I have buds connected at some point to do testing or just to kind of check out what's going on and uh, buds or basically just the seeders in general are very sensitive to voltage uh, so if you have buds or if you work with diagnostic software uh, I'm sure you noticed at some point that uh, sometimes the software will just disconnect or stop responding or whatever uh, and most of the time that's just because the battery voltage gets down to uh, something low enough like 12 and a half or 12.4 volts and then the computers will start shutting down so then bud stops working um, that's why I always have a NOCO connected now for battery tending like over seasons and stuff I use a Genius 1 or 2 uh, which is a 1 or 2 amp uh, but whenever I'm doing diagnostics, I use a 5 amp, which is more than sufficient at powering uh, whatever the load is on, a, on the machine. When it's off, obviously it's not going to power the starter or anything like that, but the standby voltage, it can more than, uh, more than happily handle that. So I'm just going to wait for this to get connected. Buds always takes a few minutes to scan. Now this is a 2017, which is a crossover year. Uh, 2016 that is when they started using Buds 2. So uh, this model in particular, you can use Buds 1 or 2. Uh, sometimes you can get a little bit more information on one or the other. But I'm going to start off with Buds 2 because that is the version uh, that this ski was made for. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll just wait for that and then we'll see what I find. All right, here we go. So we can see there are faults on the ECU, or the fault screen. All right, we have a few in here. Uh, we have a coolant temperature sensor fault. It looks like it could be a short. Same thing with the injector. Yes, P0201. Uh, and then we also have a CPU timeout. Okay, so we may be facing a ECU issue. Uh, but we're not quite sure yet. And then we have a couple other ones. So 
I'm going to start, so EC, the engine coolant temperature sensor, that one's not as pressing because it's just a temperature sensor. It has no feedback on engine performance. So I'm going to start off with the active one, which is the injector fault. Uh, in P, let's see, P0201, uh, let's see if it's giving us any information on causes. Yeah, possibly a bad injector, bad, bad wires, or a bad ECU. Uh, and of course it gives us the service actions as well. So we'll go through all that. Uh, the first thing I need to do is identify which zero one is. It's on cylinder one. So I believe that is this cylinder here. I always get these backwards, uh, but I'm gonna verify that and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I was correct. This is cylinder one, this one here. So it's basically indicating that there's a problem with this injector. It's not sure if it's the injector itself, the wiring that's going to the injector from the ECU, or if it's the ECU itself. So we are basically going to test each one of those to rule them out. Uh, now there's a few things you can do to test the injectors. You can pull the injector and put it on a test bench, um, or in my case, what I'm gonna do here is simply swap uh, injectors one and two or one and three basically just put this injector in another part uh, and move one of those injectors over and if the problem moves to another cylinder then we know that the injector is the problem um, if it doesn't and it stays with cylinder one then we ruled out the injector and we know that it has to be on the wire or it could be the ECU so first things first I'm gonna go ahead and pull the fuel rail off we just have two bolts here and I'm just going to swap the two injectors from cylinder one to cylinder two. Okay, so I just swapped cylinder one and cylinder two, cylinder two's injectors. So I'm gonna come back and we'll keep an eye on the other codes, but I'm gonna go ahead and clear this. Wait for this to pass out. So now we have no active codes. I'm gonna go ahead and start the ski again and we'll see if we're back to a injector fault on cylinder one or if it moved to cylinder two. So we got the fault code. Let's go ahead and refresh our codes here. Okay, so we are still with a injector fault on cylinder one. Okay, so we ruled out that the injector is the problem. Sometimes it is the injector, they get clogged up or whatever. Um, but in this case, we know that it is not the injector because swapping it around to another port did not bring the problem to that cylinder. It remained here. So now we know that the problem has to be either the wiring from the or from the ECU to the injector or it's got to be the ECU itself. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and trace the wiring for the injector to the ECU. Now I know uh, tracing electrical problems on CDUs uh, does seem scary. Uh, a lot of people, I get a lot of comments and messages, emails, Facebook messages, whatever, uh, from people asking how do you, how are you supposed to trace this stuff? Um, and it's actually, it's a little bit easier than you may think, especially when you're tracing electrical problems that are in the engine and not going from harnesses from the back of the ski to the front of the ski. It definitely helps if you have a service manual or the diagnostics. In fact, there's very little you can do without diagnostic software, uh, which is unfortunate because the software can get expensive. Um, but you know, if you work on your ski and you don't want to spend four or five hundred dollars plus at the dealer every single time you go, it's, it pays for itself. So uh, that's a whole separate conversation for another time. But uh, as we can see here, uh, the ECUs, pretty much every ECU for a CDU, by the way, has a A and B harness. Um, it just means that there's two different connections. In some instances, all the incoming connections go to one side and all the outgoing, like power for actuators, is to another section. Not all vehicles and makes and everything do it that way. Uh, but the important thing is to know that there is a A and a B harness. 
so you can see I'm not sure which one is A and B on this on this ECU um, but this is going to be very simple because we can see we have your injector wire uh, that's in going through this wire loom and if we trace it it comes right through and it goes to this connection right here now you'll notice on this guy if we click on the fault code and we go to service actions <clears throat> it'll tell you to check for a certain amount of resistance between the pins um, but it's also asking to check for 12 volts on that pin um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that one first before we do any wire tracing uh, but I'm gonna show you the wire tracing part next so I'll uh, just keep that in mind so the first thing we're gonna do is pull off the east the injector clip for power and we're going to check to see if we have any power going to pin number two okay so this test is going to be very simple since we're checking for power all we need to do is remember that the entire engine or basically any metal part is a ground so i'm going to go ahead and take the negative probe and just kind of rest it on our engine hoist which is also part of the engine which is grounded and then when i remove our injector clip and we'll go ahead, and I'm not sure which one's pinned to in here, but we'll just measure for power, see if we get 12 volts. And yes, we are getting 11.75, which is acceptable. That's that's basically 12 volts, uh, especially when the engine's off. So we know that power to the injector is good. Um, now that does not mean that the ECU is perfectly fine. That is simply stating that the injector is getting power. Uh, the ECU is what's going to be sending the pulsing to the ECU or to the injector so we'll get to that we'll have to narrow that down even further but what I want to do first is I'm going to disconnect this uh, harness on the ECU and then we are going to check for continuity uh, between the two wires and basically what I mean by that is I'm going to basically put my multimeter on the diode setting uh, or the continuity testing which basically just actually I'll put it on here so you can see because uh, I do this quite often okay and this one has a sounding icon but basically it's just uh, gonna let me know it's gonna make a beep if there's continuity and you see if I touch the two probes together they make a sound which means that is a good contact so when I am doing a continuity test I'm simply going to check I'll put one probe on here on the purple with blue stripe I'm going to trace that through, find where it is on the ECU connector, and I'll put the other end of the probe on there, uh, and then get it, I'll connect them. And if I get a beep, it means the wire going through here is good. If I don't get a beep, then we know that there's a break or corrosion in the wire harness here somewhere, uh, and I have to do that to both sides. We have a where there's always going to be two connections for the electrical, so I'll have to check both of these. Um, but of course, I'm going to do this with the ski off. We do not want to be pulling ECU harnesses and all this stuff uh, when the ski is still active. So go ahead and disconnect the key. Now, of course, it's best practice to remove or disconnect the battery as well. Uh, if, the, if this is your first time doing any kind of electrical testing, I highly recommend disconnecting a battery because if you don't know what you're doing, you can cause a lot of damage. In this case, I, I know what I'm doing. I'm not gonna cause any problems. I'm gonna leave the battery connected, but I'm gonna pull the harness off of the ECU here. Okay, I have the ECU harness disconnected. Now, if you remember on the service actions on BUDS2, it said that the port for this harness is harness A, port number B3. So this is harness A coming off of the ECU. And it, 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 you're, there's no way you're gonna see this on the GoPro, but each one of these, uh, there's probably 50 connections on the back of this harness. Uh, each one of them is labeled. So we wanna go to B, which is the second row, number three, which is the second one down. And to check for pins and things like that, I just use this right here. Uh, this is like a keychain loop, a metal keychain loop um, that you would find on keys. And I just kind of pulled one side out and that's like the perfect thickness to go to wire harnesses. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that into B3 here. Slide that in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my probe and same thing, I'm keeping this on the continuity side continuity testing side and then I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to our injector harness here okay so we are getting a solid beep now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in there and kind of move the wire just to see if there's a like a small break
No. Okay, so we know that the uh, the wire harness, or at least uh, that first connection, AB3, is perfectly fine. The uh, For some reason, the service actions does not indicate what the second wire is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off the back side of our wire harness here and just match it up uh, by color. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. All right, guys, you will not believe this, but I traced it down to port K1 here. And on the back side, it was actually not pressed in all the way. Um, I'll have to put a picture up of what these things look like, but uh, the wires are essentially crimped with this little metal crimp thing, and then you push it and it snaps into place in these plastic harnesses. Um, and that one was not in all the way, so I pushed it back in. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on the uh, harness here, and then we'll go ahead and restart the ski, connect it to buds, and see if that fixed the issue. Okay, I didn't hear a fault on that one, so let's go ahead and run buds. We'll see if anything comes up. This is the most painful part of BUDS 2. The scanning takes forever every single time. I don't know why. BUDS 1 is pretty much instant. BUDS 2 takes... This has been almost 10 minutes now for no reason. Alright, I was tired of waiting so switched over to BUDS 1 and sure enough within a minute it came up. So the occurred codes were still there. There was nothing that was still active so I just cleared those codes. Let's go ahead and start the ski again. Run it for about 5 seconds. <laughs> enough since we don't have water connected. Still nothing here, but well, I'm going to go ahead and read anyway. Make sure the ski doesn't go off. And there we have it. No faults. So before that injector code, I'm sure you saw, uh, was coming back pretty much right away. The second I started the ski and let it run, um, and it's not coming back now. So we know that that connection at the ECU harness was the problem. Uh, it just kind of goes to show that these weird problems don't necessarily mean there's something catastrophic get going on. Uh, I'm sure when the guy was on the water, it would have felt like something was really wrong. Uh, but in this case, it was just a case of that uh, harness connector coming out. And um, I I'll have to show a picture of what it looks like, but there's a little detent that sticks out. It's like a ribbed um, or barbed uh, thing on the side of the clip. And sometimes if that gets, if it was never really detented enough, or if it was um, just kind of weakened over time, that barb will slip and then uh, the entire clip will just pop right out. So I just bent that thing back, shoved it back in. It was a good solid connection, so we'll be all good to go there. But uh, that's, that's it for this one. There's no other faults. I have a feeling those other ones were just straggler codes from when the um, battery was dying which is fine that happens all the time a lot of times when you open this if you see a ton of codes a lot of them will be kind of occurred things that happened in the past uh, but they could also just be from a weak battery because again like i mentioned in a couple previous videos if you have a low battery um, and you wake the ski up or you try to crank it a lot of those modules will shut down the sensors won't check in injectors won't fire spark plugs will fire and then you're going to throw a ton of codes um, and it can look scary. It can look like there's something majorly wrong, um, but it could just be because you had a low battery. So had to connect it to the EcoFlow. It's actually, you can't see it, but it's pumping out 75 watts right now. So I know this battery is definitely getting a charge, um, but that active call code for the injector was definitely a problem. There was a mechanical problem in here. Uh, turns out it was just a loose connection on here. So very lucky there, but um, I'm gonna try to do a couple more of these electrical diagnostic videos because electrical gremlins on these things uh, tend to scare people a lot because, you know, People can figure out spark plugs and things like that, but when it comes down to electrical, uh, it's a little bit harder to test some of this stuff. So um, this one wasn't too bad, just a few doing a little bit of tracing, but uh, as more come in, because I do get a lot of electrical related things, I'll show you how we could trace that stuff out and find out what's going on. But that's it for this one. If you guys have any comments or questions or anything, of course, uh, same as before, just let me know.